Hi there, and welcome to Wine Searcher. I've got a number of uh, favourite uh, producers down in the, the New Zealand region of Martinborough, down at the bottom of uh, New Zealand's North Island, and one of them, uh, one of about five or six, is, uh, is Schubert, um, and their top wine is this Block B. Here we've got the 2019 vintage, um, and I'm talking about the Martinborough region. They choose to uh, label the wine as uh, Wairarapa, which is the, the, the greater region that sort of takes in sort of Gladstone, etc. Um, it doesn't really matter, that's all they're trying to rebrand that as Wellington wine country at the moment, which is a little strange as it's about an hour's drive from Wellington. But um, anyway, Martin Rapino um, from Schubert and their top wine block 19. 2019 vintage. Um, why do I like this wine? I, I love its sort of richness and opulence. Um, I get a feeling they must harvest sort of slightly later than some of their um, neighbours. This has about 14.5% alcohol, which is, you know, a fairly high Pinot from this, this region. Because in general, Martinborough tends to be cooled by the sea, so they, they, it's a valley that takes um, wind from the southern ocean that cools it and so often it's cool sometimes it's overcast there and that delays ripening the other thing to know about Martinborough is that they've got quite a lot of sort of deep um, alluvial river terrace soil and so the the vines growing there um, have to work to find water and thus they don't set huge crops and so you can get good ripeness um, if, if, if you manage the viticulture correctly um, block B as far as I mean Let's just talk about the Schubert family first. Um, Schubert, Kai Schubert and um, Marion Daimling, um, his partner, um, set up the, the vineyard. They, they bought a small amount of established um, vineyard in Martinborough in 1988 and subsequently planted um, some more uh, vines as well. Block B is slightly unusual for Martinborough where often people concentrate on a clone called the Abel clone. This is planted with Dijon clones for the 100, the 600 and the 700 series. It sort of doesn't really matter which clones they are but it's a slightly different um, planting material of Pinot Noir and it gives it a, uh, they believe, a slight, slight, slightly more sort of French, slightly more elegant style um, to the wine. Uh, this wine, as I say, picked fairly ripe and handled in such a way as to, to deliver opulence. Um, the uh, bunches are destemmed, so you're not getting any of the tannins from the, the, the stems in there. And the, the fruit is, is lightly crushed and left, left to sit uh, and macerate before fermentation. And what that does is that gives lovely um, aromas and it gives good colour and actually sort of takes lovely juicy fruit into, into the wine. It's, it's, it's a practice that's quite common in Pinot, Pinot Noir producers. Um, the wine ferments in stainless steel tanks and is then run off into oak, um, small oak barrels. Um, in those barrels it will spend about 18 months, it'll go through malolactic conversion um, and, and age for 18 months. The oak they use, a fair amount of new oak, about 45% new oak on the Block B, um, and the other 55% will be um, second uh, fill. So uh, there's a fair amount of oak influence which reinforces and supports the, the ripe fruit in the wine. Um, so, the wine itself, looking at it, it's got, it, it's, it's got a lovely dark pigmentation. It's not deep, it's not opaque, but um, you know, that's a, a, a fairly intense red there. Um, smelling it, lovely complex nose, showing a whole gamut of, of, of aromas. Uh, there's, there's, initially you're getting toasty oak, you're getting chocolatey notes and then there are sort of earthy truffly notes and the fruits in there it's rich there's a plummy note there's red prune maybe a little bit of red cherry and again that sort of earthy chocolate chocolatiness to finish off maybe a tiny touch of sort of graphite cedar from from the barrels almost like sort of pencil shavings um so tasting the wine It's got a lovely richness. The texture is smooth and supple. The tannins are very fine and it gives it a sort of a velvety texture. It's medium but medium to full bodied, mouth filling. As I say, it's got that 14.5% alcohol, which is good sort of warming. You know, it's a dry wine, but the, the, the fruit is really quite sort of, has a ripeness to it that almost seems like sweet, sweet sort of, slight red fruit note, fresh red plum. There's also that rich prune um, note to it as well. Um, 
again the sort of overlaid by earthy truffly notes and those hints of vanilla oak uh, maybe maybe sort of tiny bits of cedar coming through as well at the finish and this this richness is all at the front of the wine and then the wine has really lovely acidity I, I, I I would compare this almost sort of to, to, a, to a, a New Zealand version of a Von Romney and the, the only place I'd see the sort of difference is that with a Von Romney you'd get acidity running right the way through it whereas here the fruit's that bit richer you see the fruit at the beginning and then the acidity gives a lovely long tail to the wine. Um, this is a wine I, I, it's not the most complex of, of Martinborough's wine it has good complexity but um, I love it because of its opulence and it's just you know you're going to enjoy a glass, so I, I, I like these wines a lot. Cheers, everybody.